morning. I was making sure my box was connected. Hi, I'm Linda, Pinky Mouse Sisters in the Kitchen. Uh, Mary's at home today. I'm cooking by myself. We'll be cooking together tomorrow and Wednesday here at my house tomorrow and at her house on Wednesday. So y'all give me just a second. I gotta wash my hands again since I already been touching everything. Okay, so thank y'all so much for joining me. And uh, I really wasn't rushing. I had everything ready. It was just at the last minute I had to run in there and do something. And y'all know how that is. Or maybe you don't. But <laughs> when you're on live and you're waiting for that clock to quit chiming. And then the next thing you know it's after 10. So anyway, thank y'all for joining us. Uh, Carla is on the other end uh, monitoring. And Mary is also watching. So um, today uh, we're making... Um, I'm making a sour cream coconut cake. This is a cake that's, I kind of look at it as a winter cake because mama always made it for Christmas. And I remember the first Christmas after she passed away, uh, this is one thing that Edward asked me to make and I made it. Um, and I'm making it today. This is going to be for our family Christmas Saturday. So I hope everyone had a good Christmas, had a good weekend. It was very quiet here at our house. Uh, it was both Saturday and Sunday. I hadn't been out since Friday morning, and I went out to do a couple things Friday morning. So I'm a little stir crazy, and I'm probably going to get out after a while just to get out of the house for a few minutes. But I have got my oven on 350, and I am making a big cake. Now, this recipe will be on our website um, either later today or tomorrow. T today is actually a holiday and, um, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean that we don't work, but um, it may not be on there until tomorrow. So, uh, but it will be on there. So, um, if you want to, I put some tips on there. If you want to make this uh, um, and make it a smaller amount, just cut it in half. We've had people to tell us that or ask us why we make a different amount than we have in the recipe. Well, today I'm reversing it. I'm making a big amount and putting the same recipe on, on our website that I'm actually making today. If you choose not to want to make this bigger one, like I said, just half it. And if you do, and I put the notes in there, uh, you can make it in a nine by 13 pan. I'm making a layer cake but you can make it in a nine by 13 pan and also probably a dozen muffins out of it. So I got, um, these are three inch, they're eight inch by three inch, they're Fat Daddy-O, these are my cake pans. I've got parchment in the bottom and on the sides. And um, this here, I know that y'all have seen us do this before, but um, move this out of the way. If you bake a lot, um, these are very inexpensive. I didn't bring the package in here, but I know Mary showed them to y'all the other day. These have the little wings on the side, and it makes it really easy when you're taking the cake out. And if you get the 8-inch, um, the little side things, if you catch it just right, um, this pan is greased, generously greased. If you catch it just right, it will just, it will just one round, and it's on there. And then... I always start where the seam is and go around and just slightly um, grease it again. So I don't put flour on them. I know a lot of y'all do and I know my sister does, but I've made cakes like this for years and I do not put flour on my pans. Okay, so we got these ready. Put this aside. And I'm going to just move my pan so I can have room to work here. Switch them around. I don't want to move them off of my counter because I'm going to be using them in a minute. But I'll move them over here. And this cake here is made 
with the cake mix. And um, um, it's very simple to make. It doesn't take that many ingredients. Mostly, probably everything you'd have in your cabinet or pantry, except you might not carry cream of coconut. And this is, it's designed to go to in your cabinet like this. Um, this is, you can buy it in a can. And I remember the first time I looked for this, Mama, when she bought, she used to buy it in a can. And I don't have one, or I would show you, but um, I couldn't find it in the store. And, you know, I don't go down aisles where there's, um, and I'm not, not judging, please don't think I am, but I don't go down aisles where there's um, alcohol and that kind of products and make drink mixes. Well, most of the time you're going to find this in the aisle where there are drink mixes, like to make drinks, mixed drinks or whatever. I, I hate to even say that stuff because I don't, I don't, I don't like to feel like I am, uh, condoning something, but that's where you're going to find it at. Now, there's a little mom and pop store here, about 30 miles from here. It's kind of like, it's not an affiliated, but it's something like that. And they had this, and it was in, in the aisle with the jelly. In fact, that's where I got this. I try to keep a couple of extra ones just to make sure that, um, that I've got enough to, to last. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. This is 16 ounces. No, I'm sorry, it's 22 ounces. And it's um, it has oil in it, of course. Now, this is different than coconut water. This is cream of coconut. And some of you probably have cooked with it before. But when you open it, the oil may be at the top. I actually microwave this a little bit with the lid off because it's really thick. And, um, and it wouldn't come out real good. It comes out like in clumps. Not not clumpy, but it comes out in spurts, I guess I should say. So I took the lid off, microwaved it about 15 seconds, and then I could get it off. So I'm going to use this in the cake mix, and I'm also going to use it in the frosting. And you can see there, I hope you can see, it's kind of opaque looking. It smells really good. So the recipe calls for two white cake mixes. I didn't have white cake mixes, but I did have French vanilla. And it's pretty white. It's not real white. And, of course, when you put egg yellows in it, it's going to, or whole eggs, it's going to give it a little bit of color. But that's not the point for the cake to be white. That's just what the recipe calls for. If you don't have white, um, use what you have. If you have yellow, use yellow. Um, you know, just use whatever you've got. And this is Betty Crocker, but you can use store brand. I've used store brand many times. So I'm using two French vanilla cake mixes. I sift. Now, one thing when you're when you're using a cake mix for a recipe, you want to sift it because there are going to be lumps in it. And trust me, I've never opened a cake mix that didn't have some lumps in it. So sift it, and I've got these two sifted, and I've got my um, sour cream, I've got my flavorings, I've got my oil. I didn't uh, I didn't measure the oil yet. And you'll probably notice on here that I've got a lot of eggs. This is 10 eggs, but they're very small. So the recipe is going to call for six eggs. But these are yard eggs that my neighbor gave me. And so I wanted to make sure that I had enough egg in it. So I put, I have 10 eggs cracked there. So um, first of all, I'm just going to pour. And there's really, this is real simple and easy to mix up. Put you can do this all in one bowl. So put your um, sifted cake mix in there. And one cup of oil, one cup of vegetable oil. Uh, you could use can, uh, canola, but don't use any that's got any flavor to it because it will change the uh, taste of your cake. Let me make sure I got a cup in that. Now that might sound like a lot of oil, but you remember this is a double, you know, this is, this is going to make a big cake. Okay, so I'm going to pour the oil in here. That's one cup. I'm going to pour, uh, let's see, what do, I, what do I want to put next? I'll put my sour cream, and this is a 16-ounce container. I'm going to use all of it. I 
don't keep sour cream in my refrigerator because Mike and I don't eat sour cream and I don't like for it to ruin. So when I buy sour cream, it's for a recipe. Okay, now I'm going to pour my flavorings in there and I'm using clear flavorings. And these are, this is not, well, this is extract. The coconut is, the vanilla is not. But two teaspoons of coconut extract, and this is Watkins. And most of the time, you used to get to get this at Walmart, but our Walmart doesn't carry it anymore. You can get it at flea markets, and some little stores carry it. Or you can find a vendor online that carries Watkins. So two teaspoons of coconut and... Oh, no, I'm not putting vanilla in this. I'm putting vanilla in the in the frosting. Okay, I'm glad I looked at that. Okay, so I got that. Let me check my recipe off. I got my cake mixes, the sour cream. Here's my cream with coconut. I got my oil, my coconut ex, uh, extract, and then eggs. So everything except the cream of coconut. Let me get this in here. We weren't sure how many people would um, be on today watching, but there was two cakes that I really wanted to get on before, and I know technically the holidays are over as far as the date's concerned, but not everybody has Christmas on Christmas Day or Christmas weekend, and, and our family doesn't, so um, we're still baking and cooking for our family Christmas this coming Saturday. I'm just gonna pour them all in at one time. Okay, so I've got cake mix, sour cream, coconut, cream of coconut, vegetable, coconut extract, eggs. So that's everything in here. Now I'm gonna get my mixer on. I don't think I've wiped off my mixer. I kind of dusted some flour on it a while ago. Okay. I'm going to start this off slow because I don't want it to splatter. This is a really good cake. not going to be white because of the egg yolk. You don't want to over mix it, but you do want to get it mixed up good. where you get the cake uh, parchment rounds and the parchment liners, pan liners, um, you can order from Amazon. They're very inexpensive. And um, if you do a lot of cakes, they are so worth it. A few little extra dollars that you spend on it. They're just a, they're a time saver. And they really do help when you're getting ready to bake some cakes. Okay, so you can see this is a 24 cup mixing bowl and it's probably about half full. So I'm going to try to pour this to where y'all can see it and try to just kind of guesstimate it to get it even. Now, you've noticed I'm, I'm not putting coconut in the cake. Um, it's got lots of coconut flavor because it's got the cream of coconut. And it's also got the coconut extract in it. All right. This pan right here needs some. It's kind of hard to, to do this to where you can see it with the camera. I want to turn my bowl around to where it's facing me and then y'all couldn't see it. Okay. 
I think I pretty much got all of it in there. I hate wasting anything. Now I've got a little bit on the side of my pan, so I'm just going to wipe that off. I think I got a little bit less than that, one, but these are going to bake up nice. They're, they're going to be a lot bigger than what you think they are. So just kind of tap them on the, on the counter to get the bubbles out. And I'm going to put these in the oven. And I don't think, well, I'm going to check. I think I may get them all on the same layer, on the same uh, rack. But I think I'm going to put two on one rack and one on the other. Because um, I want them to have room, room to bake. Okay. So I'm going to set the clock for 25, timer for 25 minutes. And they're not going to be done in 25 minutes, but I'm going to kind of get an idea about how much longer it'll take to cook after then. Now we're going to make some frosting. Let me get this out of the way here. Where'd I put my beaters at? Now, give me a second here. Get these beaters washed. So we noticed a lot of little, a lot of pictures of all the little kiddos and their presents um, opening up their gifts from their parents and their grandparents and great grandparents and friends and neighbors and it's always fun to see the little kids excitement on their faces I was telling Mike um, you know um, I've always said we've always said that it's not about how many gifts you get what kind of gifts they are how much they cost what the name brand is or if it's not a name brand but um, Little kids are going to be very excited, uh, no matter what it is. And my cousin texted me over the weekend, and she sent me a picture of a little red house down at the farm. And she said she's out taking a drive, and she wondered how Ma, how Ma Lee always gave us all a gift. And I said, I don't know how she did it, but she did. And it didn't matter if it was a pair, of scar a pair of socks, if it was a head scarf, if it was a quarter or 50 cents. And one year, I think she gave us all a silver dollar. What it was, it was just the excitement that all of us little kids felt. We were just all around sitting on the floors because, you know, the adults would sit in the chairs and the little kids would gather around and they'd call our name and, uh, and we would get our gift. And it just such, such happy memories um, from times like that, that when it wasn't about what you got, it was about being together and um, enjoying each other and also um, that little gift that we knew we were going to get. Okay, so now I'm going to make the frosting. I have, y'all know we're sponsored by Imperial Sugar, and this is, I threw the powdered sugar away, but... Um, I'm using Imperial Powdered Sugar. I did sip this. This is two pounds. And um, I put a little bit of variation on the, um, let's see. No, I don't have that. I have the vanilla in this. Where did I put the vanilla? Oh, there it is right there. Um, so um, in the recipe, it says four to uh, six tablespoons of whole milk. I have me some milk out here because I'm going to dip it. And this consistency should be thick but horrible. So you can always add two, but you can't take out. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to put my vanilla in there first. And I'm doing two teaspoons of clear vanilla because I do want this white. 
I don't want any color to it. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of this. And then I've got four tablespoons of the cream of coconut. And I move my little um, spatula, so let me get it up over here. I hope you can see what that looks like. Now this is going to look like a lot of frosting, and it is, but I want a lot on there. Okay. Now this, I'm going to do, the milk I'm going to do a tablespoon at a time. In the recipe, I, I started with four, so I'm going to put four in here. And this is whole milk. If you only use 2%, you can use 2%. Um, I just, in my baking, I prefer whole milk. Again, start your mixer on low because you don't want the powdered sugar to fly up in your face and all over your counter. And you're definitely going to need more than four teaspoons, I mean four tablespoons. You might even need, you might even need more than what I've got out. Now, it's been a long time since I've made this cake. And y'all know when you're doing a recipe, you have to, uh, you have to pretty much make it if it's been a while since you've made it. I added three more tablespoons. And that's why sometimes we'll make a, uh, make a, a correction to recipe once we, um, put it online. Because if we haven't made it right before we go live, we will um, we'll make adjustments to it after we make it live. Okay, I'm going I'm going to put some more in here. Now you do want to be careful though, because a little bit of liquid in powdered sugar goes a long way. You can tell that it's starting to get um, liquidy. Okay, so that's four, so that's a total of eight, t eight tablespoons, nine, and ten. Let me make a note on here, ten. Still thick. And when I put the coconut in it, it's going to make it thicker. But you do want it thick now. That's why I'm saying don't, you know, don't just go in and pour a cup of milk in it because it's going to be too thin. And something that I didn't put on this recipe that I'm fixing to put in here is some salt. So give me just a second. Let me grab some sea salt. Because I just know some of y'all are thinking, you know, that's going to be so sweet. And you're right. It is going to be sweet. I put this in my buttercream all the time. So this is a half a teaspoon. And that's probably not too much. If y'all want to cut it down and do a fourth, you can. But I want to get some of that sweetness cut out of there. Maybe not use quite all of it. Almost a half a teaspoon. And I'll add that to the recipe. Okay, this is 11. And that's 12. So that's 12 tablespoons of, of whole milk. So because it's thick and you've got three layers to put frosting on, it's not going to be too much for this cake. I can tell you that right now. Okay. I'm almost thinking that I'm going to put just a little bit more milk. You can see it's it's pourable, and in the recipe, I put pour, thick but pourable. That's how I wanted it. So, um, I think, I think I sound like my mama, I think. <laughs> Remind me so much of mama. 
I'm gonna get just a tad bit more milk and then I'm gonna put the coconut in it. We keep two, get two different kinds of milk in our refrigerator because um, Mike uses 2% and I use whole milk. So I'm gonna get, I think that might be enough. Before I put the milk up, let me check. So that's 11, 11 tablespoons. I think it's going to be good. So 11 tablespoons. So that was, a, that was twice as much as what I put on the recipe. So um, I will adjust that before I send it to little Linda. Get this put up over here and get this milk back in the refrigerator. know how I am about something sitting out. I just, uh, I just do not like stuff sitting out at room temperature, so I wanted to get that back in there. Okay, so I have got, is that pretty and white? I've got 14 ounces of Baker's Secret Sweetened Flaked Coconut. Now, I heated this just briefly in the microwave. I gotta sit down. Um, it just, if, if you keep your coconut in the freezer or in the refrigerator, we had a really hard time finding this uh, last year, maybe two years ago. This year, we didn't think we were gonna be able to find it at all. Um, it's for the Walmarts around here, they have not had one bag of this. They got their brand, but we don't like their brand. And sorry, Walmart, but we don't. We like Baker's Secret. So I found some at Brookshire's. So I called Mir, that's at one of our local stores, and asked her if she want some. And she said yes. So I just bought a whole bunch of it. And then I believe Kroger's had it when I went in there the other day. But um, if you want good coconut, don't buy the off brand. It is not good. It's dry and it doesn't have any taste to it. And this is delicious. So this is a 14 ounce bag, just barely heated in the microwave. And you don't want to beat this in with the mixer. You just want to pour this in and fold it in with a spatula. And that's a lot of coconut. I know it is, but um, trust me, that's what you want in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna just fold it in there together. To me, this looks like snow. It just looks so pretty. It reminds me so much of my mama. Now, when you get this uh, cake done, um, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about it in a minute because I will have to come back on this afternoon and frost it because the cake needs to completely cool. But there's your frosting, and if you can see, it is very thick. And that's just the way I want it. Now, if you try to put this on the hot cake, it's gonna tear it off pieces. So you don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna put the lid on this and set this aside. So uh, the next thing that I made this morning, and this, is, this takes just a minute. I know Mary and I both have told y'all how to make this, but I made some simple syrup. And um, you, you can usually always fix a cake if you've cooked it too long, even though we don't like to do that. But the simple syrup just is, it it's just makes the cake so good. You can make it different flavors. I usually just keep mine plain because um, that way I can use it on more than one cake. I used to make huge batches of it at a time. And one day I used my pastry brush to dip that in my container and, um, and it doesn't keep, it will mold if you do that. If you pour some out in a small container and do the tops of your cake, 
then this will stay good in your refrigerator for a long time. And it's just, it looks like clear water. Um, I made a huge batch one time. It's, it's very thin. And I had it sitting on the back of the stove in the boiler cooling. And I, I think I've told y'all this before. And I came in here to look for it, and it was gone. And I said, Mike, what'd you do with my simple syrup? And he said, I thought that was water. I threw it out. <laughs> so when I make simple syrup now, I'll put a little note on it. Simple syrup, cool, and do not throw out. But I made this this morning fresh. Um, you can keep it in a closed container. Um, you can, like I said, pour some out in a smaller container. So when you use your pastry brush or if you're using a squeeze bottle, uh, you can use a squeeze bottle. Just pour in there what you think you'll need. You're also going to need a cake tester. And um, uh, we have a really good one um, with uh, Pampered Chef. It's got the releaser on the end that you can go around. But another brand, too, that's really good that I buy them. Um, actually, the last time I bought them, I bought a case. And it's been a while. Because for some reason, they get thrown out. And I've lost several of them. So I just got tired of hunting for them. So I just ordered a case. Um, and I think it had like a couple of dozen in it. They're they have a real tiny uh, uh, cake prick at the end. So when you, when you test your cake to see if it's done, it doesn't make a huge hole in it. So you want to, after your, um, well, first of all, once your cakes are done, I'm getting ahead of myself, you want to make sure they're done. If they're a little tiny shaky in the middle, do not take them out of the oven. If you do, they're going to fall. So you can tell when you open the oven if they're just barely touching it, if they're, if they're uh, not done in the middle. Leave them in there. Set the clock, the timer for another five minutes. And then check it. You don't want to overbake it, but you don't want to pull a cake out of the oven that's not done because if you do, it's just going to sink right in the middle. So... Um, once it's done, take it out and set it on something to cool in the pan. I don't leave my cakes in the pan very long. Most of the time, I leave them in there about eight minutes, no longer than 10 minutes. And then when you turn them out, if you're turning them out on a rack, I prefer to have a piece of parchment paper on the rack. Now, you may say that defeats your purpose because if, if, you know, if you don't have those holes in the rack, then the cake's not going to cool. But the cake will stick to that rack, and it, it'll stick to the parchment, too, to be honest with you, if it's real hot. But um, it's just, I prefer turning that on, on parchment. Y'all can do whatever you want to, but that's what I do. Um, and then you're going to let them cool for about, they've been in the pan about eight minutes. You take them out of the pan, you let them cool for about another five minutes, and then you want to put the simple syrup on them. Poke your holes and either brush it on or either use a squeeze bottle and put it on. Now, don't soak them to where they're wet, but, you know, just just go around the tops and uh, make sure that all the top is covered. So then you're going to let that set and you're going to let it completely cool. Um, and I don't have them in here, but Hobby Lobby has... Um, the cake circles, I don't like the cardboard ones. They're no good. I wouldn't waste my time buying any uh, because all it's going to do is your icing is going to make a, it's going to soak into the, to the cardboard and it's going to look, it's going to look, um, I don't know. I, I, it's just going to look bad. It's going to have like a rim around it to where it's look like it's wet. So if you're going, to, if you're not going to put your cake directly on a cake plate, which a lot of people do, put their cake directly on a cake plate. Um, I don't for several reasons. For one, for so many years I baked and sold to the public, and you can't. Well, you can move a cake off of a cake plate, but you need the story of the refrigerator. So uh, it needs to be where you can put it in a box and it needs to be on a cake round or they call them cake circles. Well, Hobby Lobby has some that are white. They have them in all sizes from six inch up to, I don't know, maybe 16 inches. And they also have the, the uh, oblong ones for a sheet cake. They're plastic, and they are very sturdy, and they will not absorb when you decorate and when you frost your cake. It's not going to show where uh, butter or, or 
if you use Crisco, it's not going to make a ring around it. You're not going to be able to see it because it's plastic. Um, so those are great. And they're also great to turn cakes over on. Now, these are not, these are not, they're not terribly expensive, but they're not cheap. So you want to make sure you get them. If you buy some, get them when they're either 40 or 50% off. And that's usually when I stock up on mine. So, and you can also get an acrylic um, plate that you use over and over and over uh, to turn cakes off on. Um, and of course, if you're, if you're really into cake making, you need cake lifters. And trust me, I have bought literally thousands of dollars worth of cake supplies. And if anybody was going to start a home cottage bakery, I would be really quick to tell you, don't go in and buy everything that you see or everything that you think that you need because you need just a few basic supplies. You need, number one, you need very good cake pans. Do not bake a cake in a cheap cake pan. You need some rounds, some parchment rounds, and you need some good things to turn them off all over and you need a turntable to decorate your cakes. The first one that I had uh, was a Lazy Susan, and it was it was huge, it was wooden. It was probably 20 inches, it was really big, and I bought it at the Goodwill. And I used that same turntable for probably, I don't know, 30 years, and then Mary bought me my Atico, and I, that's what I use now, it's professional turntable it's it's manual you don't you know it doesn't rotate automatically but um uh what i what i'm saying is you don't have to start out with the best get your priorities right and get spend your money on what you need and that's cake pans and supplies that you need and as far as cake decorating tools you don't need very many of them either and like i said i bought i bought just so much of that over the years and they're they're stored in totes, what I haven't given away, and I've given away to, to two different people. But uh, I don't know how I got on this subject. But um, anyway, um, make your list and <laughs> say what are your must-haves and what are your wants, and add to the want list as you can afford it. And that's that's what I've done over the years. But um, but there are some things that that really do make it easier if you are baking cakes. So um, let's see, I think we've got just a little bit of time left over there before the buzzer goes off. So um, yesterday I had planned to do a traditional Christmas dinner, except I was gonna fix ham instead of a turkey. And we had that smoked turkey breast that we ate Thanksgiving and I had bought one over at Bear Creek, and I cut it in half because it was it was an expensive piece of meat, but it was worth every penny of it. So we ate half of it, and then I put the rest of it in the freezer, and then we ate that Thanksgiving. But um, I had a ham that I bought, and I was going to fix dressing and mashed potatoes and green beans and corn and, you know, the whole thing. Uh, we got enough sweets around here. I hadn't planned to make any dessert. But... Um, Mike is like, Linda, he said, I just really don't want a big meal today. He said, I think he was probably thinking if I come in here and cook for two hours, he would feel bad if he didn't feel like eating any of it. So I said, well, how does potato soup and cornbread sound? He said, that sounds really good. So our Christmas menu was a potato soup and a hot pan of cornbread, and I made us a fruit bowl for later after we got through eating. And it was really good. In fact, I'm gonna have some for lunch. Just plain old potato soup with cream of chicken and, and chicken broth and uh, thinly sliced carrots. And that's all I had in it besides salt and pepper. And it was really, really delicious. So, um, let's see, I've gone over the frosting. Let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to tell about the cake. Um, the imperial sugar. So we got. Um, so when, once your cake gets completely cool, and you decide what plate you want it on, if you've got it on a, a cardboard circle, which you know I already told y'all I don't like them, but if that's what you have, then that's what you use. Or if you've got a plastic round to put it on, or if you're just gonna put it on a regular dinner plate, um, start at your bottom, and then you know put a spoonful on. And I'm I'll do this after a while. And then, you know, kind of watch the amount that you got because you want a lot of it on top. 
and uh, if it needs thin down a little bit, you can thin it down a little bit with some more whole milk. Um, I think this is going to be okay, but if it needs to be thin, I will thin it down. I smell the cake. I'm going to go over here and look. It's got about a minute left, but I'm going to go over here and look and see what it looks like. I need to run my oven through the self-cleaning cycle. Oh, no, it's got a long way to go yet, but you can tell that they're about, the cake pans are about, they've risen up to about two-thirds full. So this is going to take um, probably at least another 15 minutes to cook. So um, I am going to um, get off the air now and be back on uh, later on today uh, when my cake is completely cooled. And um, I will already have the simple syrup on top because that needs to be that needs to be done, you know, pretty quick after it comes out of the oven. So I'll have that done, uh, but I will frost it on a live video of this afternoon after it gets completely cool. So um, I appreciate y'all joining us so much today. And um, the Parchment Round brand, it doesn't matter what brand it is, but I will tell you that um, I'm gonna set the timer on 12 minutes. I don't wanna overcook this. Um, let's just see if they're, um, I don't know, Mary may, Mary and Carla may be answering these questions, but uh, parchment brands doesn't matter. I like the ones with the wings on it, and that that's, makes it a little easier to pick it up. Sometimes I pick, actually lifted the cake out of the pan by those wings. Um, I will tell you this with Amazon. Um, I have Amazon Prime, and I know that probably a lot of y'all do too, but um, that's one of the things that we pay for on the, on the yearly subscription, right? Because, you know, you're paying for free shipping, and you want to make sure that you take advantage of that. So, and you have to, I think you have to buy so much to get free shipping. But um, there's several different companies, and if y'all shoppers on Amazon know what I'm talking about, there's several different companies that will sell the same thing. And sometimes it'll be up there... Um, other companies or other vendors or however they word it sells the same item. You need to scroll down because you might find it cheaper. Now, if you find it cheaper, it might say um, it's sold by a third party. And a lot of times you have to watch that because they may charge you shipping. And unless it's something I really want, I'm not going to buy that if I have to pay extra shipping for it. I will, I will just order it. If it's a dollar or two extra, I'll pay that because I'm not going to pay seven, eight or nine dollars shipping for something that I, that only costs seven or eight dollars. I'm not going to do that. So, um, and besides the fact that I'm paying for the yearly subscription and, and it's like you're paying twice. So scroll down, just in, just key in Amazon and key in parchment rounds and there'll be a whole list of stuff come up. And, um, if it's Amazon prime, then it will say on there, you know, you know, shipping, Received tomorrow or the next day or whatever now shipping is off kilter right now because of the weather and the holidays But y'all know what I'm talking about So um, make sure that you do check several now these rounds come in all sizes. I've got three inch cake pans I've got three inch rounds. I've got rounds um, The parchment rounds all the way up to the 16 inch pans um, And then you could buy them for the square um, you can wear different squares. You can buy the rectangles. I mean, you can just buy any size. I do more eight inch cakes than I do anything. And that's what I use the most of. And the same thing with the liners, they come in different sizes too. And the deal with the liners, if you get, I'm probably repeating some of the same things Mary said, and I'm not trying to override what she said by any means, but if some, somebody on here might not have heard her say that, if you get the rounds that are the size of the pan, like I had the eight inch ones, they are made and curved to go in that pan. If you get a size that's not made for that pan, you're going to have to cut them because they're not going to just, just wrap around um, easy like that one did this morning. So keep that in mind also. Um, let's see, was there, is there any other questions? Um, I guess I'm sure that if, if there were, I'm sure my sisters answered them. So um, 
I appreciate everybody uh, jumping on here. Make sure that y'all share our page, and uh, uh, we'll be to here tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Um, I'm, I'll be making a cherry nut cake tomorrow, one, another one of Mama's cakes that she always made at Christmas. And But I will be back on this afternoon to show y'all uh, when I frost this one and show y'all what it looks like. So hope y'all will join me then. I won't put the time on because um, I don't know what time it'll be. My glasses I bought several months ago. I bought them and I had to get, um, my eyes were bothering me real bad. The sun was glaring in the summer. This is back in the summer, and I needed some sunglasses. So in order to get prescription sunglasses, I had to have an updated prescription. So I went um, and bought these, got these, and got a pair of sunglasses. So I've had these for several months. They're not, probably because I'm closer to the camera, you might have noticed it. But um, I thank you anyway, and I think I got them at Eyeglass World. Long view is where they come from. Uh, cheaper than a lot of the other eyeglass places. Um, okay, well, I guess I will get off, and I will say happy Monday to y'all, and I'll be back on a little bit later on, and excited that, uh, we'll be, my sister and I'll be cooking tomorrow, and also, um, Wednesday together, Lord willing, so, and we're very excited about our family Christmas this weekend, and, uh, our, just can't wait to be together with our brothers, and, uh, um, uh, Linnell and Debbie, and all of the nieces and nephews and all the little kids and we don't know how many's going to be there but we're trying to get a head count we may even have some cousins there so love y'all uh be sure to count your blessings and i'll see y'all back on um a little bit later today bye-bye